Hello everyone. Well, it's that time of year again. It's that time of year again. It's time for the Harvest Moon Festival. And I'll be talking about the Harvest Moon Festival a little later after I've done my video. I'll, t I'll discuss the Harvest Moon Festival in a little more detail later. But one thing I can say, just two words, baked goods. Baked goods, we celebrate the Harvest Moon Festival with baked goods. I'll, I'll be talking about that a little bit later. For now, for now, I'm going to discuss um, good cop and bad cop. Why do I say good cop and bad cop? What, what's the difference between a good cop and a bad cop? Well, a good cop is a hero. A good cop is a hero, and a good cop accomplishes... Um, what can't what no one else can accomplish and is uh, always there for the people he loves and need or she or she loves and needs in their lives but a bad cop lets everybody down and is a villain you get you can only be one or the other there's no in between with cops so good cop and bad cop i'm going to give an example of each so, we'll give an example of a bad cop. Uh, Daniel Otterer. Daniel Otterer was caught on, on um, camera, or it was a recording, it was a voice recording, um, of him making fun of a woman who died. That's right. Daniel Otterer made fun of a woman who died he was poking fun at her and saying that she was, that she, her life had limited value. I'll tell you how, how this all played out. This was in Seattle, and there was a cop going 74 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone. Okay, so this is a place where pedestrians normally walk around, and the, the speed limit is 25. This cop was going 74 miles per hour in a 25 mile per hour zone, responding to a call for a for a drug overdose. So somebody was experimenting with drugs and having fun and played around with drugs, and this cop was going 74 miles an hour to rescue this person and hit this woman, and she bounced off his vehicle and was thrown 138 feet away from the vehicle after he hit her. And um, she just bounced. She bounced off his, his uh, bumper and was thrown 138 feet. She died very sadly and it was a tragedy because she came from India and she was serving her family Back in India, she was sending her parents money so they could survive. And this happens to her. This happens to her. And um, so this guy was laughing and saying that, that uh, her life had limited value. No wonder there's so much lawlessness in Seattle, okay? Nobody respects the Seattle cops. Nobody respects the cops in Seattle, and everyone just does whatever they please in Seattle. No wonder they do so, whatever they please in Seattle with cops like this. No wonder it's a lawless place. And if anybody had any discipline at all, they would, they would uh, charge this Daniel Otterer with, with uh, something. I guess he's got freedom of speech, but boy, oh boy, he should lose his job over this. He should. He should lose his job over this because, and then they, he said, no, I was just making fun of the, the lawyers that, and imitating what they would say about this woman. And, um, I don't think so. I don't think any lawyer would talk like that because, um, it's just, it's just terrible. It's a tragic story and this Daniel Otterer had no right to, poke fun at this dead woman and say that her life had limited value. It was awful. That was awful. But apparently this happened back in January, so it's a ways back that this happened. It didn't come to the surface until now. Now I'm going to talk to you about a hero, a cop hero. 
This is a, a sheriff's deputy, um, Ryan Clinken Broomer. Ryan Clinken Broomer was murdered on the job. He was in his uniform, he was in his squad car, and a car pulled up to his car and ambushed him and killed him right in his car. He was engaged to be married. He was about to be married to his bride. And he was killed tragically. Now, how do we know he's a hero? Because of the people who are in his life that know him best say that he was a hero. And he died He died doing what, what his father and his grandfather before him had done which was be a cop. He, he was a third generation cop and he cared about people in his life. He cared about his fiance, he cared about his, his parents and his family. He cared because he was a good man and he should not have been taken so soon. He should not have been taken so soon. He was a good man and um, this Ryan Clinken Broomer, we pay our respects to him. Um, a moment of silence for Ryan Clinken Broomer. So we we care we care about Ryan Clinken Broomer, and we we want to pay pay our respects to him, and um, can send a donation to whatever charity they they're sponsoring or maybe to his family to help them out financially now that he's gone and uh he he was ambushed he was ambushed and they're trying to figure out who did it they're still looking for the suspect and they they are paying people whatever um a reward for any information that could lead to the arrest of the person who ambushed him. It was a dark colored car pulled up next to his car, shot him and then drove off. And he w was ambushed recklessly and without regard to human life and um, was, was a, a very, very sad incident it was very sad and we're we're all on Ryan Clinken Broomer's side and on the side of his family so that's a that's the way it goes with a cop you can either be a good cop and the good ones get taken too soon or you can be a bad cop and not all not all police officers that are good die obviously but but like they say, only the good die young. Um, he was he was a good man with Clinton Broomer, and we want to remember him. Um, for as for Daniel Otterer, we we can do without uh, cops like this. He should lose his job for sure. But he has freedom of speech. He can say whatever he wants without being arrested. But he should lose his job. And um, because where there's good cops, where there's good cops, there's less lawlessness and there's more order and, and better, better self-control of people. People are better at self-control when they know that the cops are, are good cops and that they're on the beat and that they're going to take them in if they do bad, if they do wrong. Whereas when there's lawlessness, when there's people driving 74 miles per hour to get to a, to a drug OD and hit an innocent bystander and then get mocked and laughed at for that, that's just wrong. That's a bad scenario. That's the worst case scenario for a cop. Um, except for that scorpion unit. That scorpion unit was the worst. <laughs> you know, um, uh, you might remember that from a ways back. There were a whole bunch of black men that were cops 
and they attacked a, another black man who wasn't a cop. They pulled him out of his car and began to beat, beat the living daylights out of him, and he hadn't done anything wrong. So that was bad. That was very, very bad. But I suspect that the elites were behind that. No one, no elites were behind this um, incident in Seattle, but it was very, very sad incident. So um, on to the the festival, the Harvest Moon Festival. Harvest Moon Festival is a time. Harvest Moon Festival is a time when we get together, when we gather together and um, have a festival and um, share what we've learned over the summer. And I know that there's a lot of you that like to take summer classes, summer classes in cooking, summer classes in yoga, summer classes in karate, summer classes in all sorts of things that you do for a summer class, that you learn something new and then share it with somebody else. You share the, the, uh, joy of what you've learned with somebody else that's the purpose of the harvest moon festival to pre to to uh, apply your trade and um show what you've learned in a summer class over the over the summer maybe it's you've knit some things and you're going to sell your knitting or or you um did some crafts the crafty person or did a painting and are going to sell the painting or maybe Maybe uh, you learned to uh, to juggle, and you're juggling to to show off your skill for the crowd, and um, and also the baked goods. Don't forget baked goods because we all love baked goods. So you're plying your trade and showing it off to your friends and family. That's the Harvest Moon Festival where we do it every year, and it ends with a with a goddess worshippers thanksgiving <laughs> yeah thanksgiving it's a feast day <laughs> and that's that's a couple weeks off so enjoy the harvest moon festival with your friends and family and loved ones and i'll see you next time